All right, guys. So in this video, we're talking about the uh, MJX Bug Seven. Uh, this is a very light camera drone, under 250 grams. And so some of you guys have been watching my Mavic Mini videos, have been asking for a cheaper alternative to the Mavic Mini. So that Mavic Mini comes in at about $400 with one battery and controller, and you can get like a case and extra batteries for I think for like $500. This one comes in, I think about 150. Uh, I think the price does fluctuate up and down. There might be coupon codes, so check the uh, link in the description for the current price. Uh, so, in, I mean, in a nutshell, if you don't want to watch the whole video, uh, the Mavic Mini is better, but you pay more for what you get. And if you're just looking for sort of a beginner drone, and I wouldn't necessarily call it a beginner drone, but maybe something cheaper, where if you're a beginner and you crash it. Um, you're not out $500. So anyway, so the drone's under 250 grams with the battery and uh, folding arms like the Mavic Mini. The 2S 1500 milliamp hour battery does have uh, GPS, of course, and optical flow sensors on the bottom for maintaining position. Of course, two-way micro SD card here, and they do recommend a, uh, I think, a U3 card. So it's recording, yeah, it's for recording the 4K video, but I'm not sure why they need such a high bitrate card because the bitrate is really low on the 4k and it's only 16 frames per second and there's 2.5k or 1440p mode at 25 frames per second so that's really the only usable mode if you want to take photos the photos will come out in 4k so those will look pretty good the camera in here i've actually tried it already it's not bad in in decent lighting uh, you do have to manually adjust the tilt of the camera it's not on a gimbal at all and there's no stabilization at all either so it's very bare bones to get the weight down and the cost down so the controller here, um, basically you have an on-off switch here. This unlocks the motors. Uh, altitude hold, of course, so centered throttle. The button here is for photos and videos, so short press will take photos, long press will start and stop video. Return to home button here. GPS on and off switch over here. At the top here is an LED button, so there's an LED somewhere on here. I think it's the front one that'll turn it on and off. If you short press it, if you long press it, it'll change it from low rates to high rates. And I believe um, this one here is for taking off. So you unlock here and this will take off and land. And uh, these little arms in the bottom here will pop out to hold the controller a little bit better. So it looks like that. Uh, the only real antenna of these two is this one here. This one is a fake antenna. And there's a little pop out thing here for the phone holder, but uh, your phone's gotta be a smaller one. I tried mine uh, as a Galaxy Note 8, but like a six inch screen does not fit that. So I'm gonna be just holding it in uh, the side of me to record the uh, phone stuff. We are turning on the controller here, and I'm not sure if this is going to come out on the camera or not. But basically, these two bars here are for signal, uh, drone battery, uh, controller battery level, distance, and height, and I think that's in meters. GPS on off here, and how many satellites you have. Obviously, zero right now. It's turned off, and then. Mode 2, you can switch this to Mode 1 if you want, and then uh, low and high rates over here. Now the first time you actually turn this on, it's not bound together, so what you have to do is um, uh, hold the lock button down, turn on the controller, and then turn on the drone, and then it will uh, uh, bind up, and you only have to do that one time. Alright, so go ahead, let's turn on the drone, just press that button right there. And you heard a beep from the transmitter, so it has uh, connected already and you see full bars and you're gonna get a little symbol here for compass calibration soon there it is right there it's gonna so you can you don't actually have to connect up the app at all you can actually fly without it but uh, this little flashing light here is for compass calibration um, yeah, I'm not sure if that'll come on the camera or not but that's for compass calibration so you can do that without the phone or you can initiate from the phone as well if you want to do that all right, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the compass calibration and just make it clockwise three times horizontally. And then clockwise three times vertically. It should beep. Okay, it didn't beep, but the compass calibration uh, symbol on the transmitter went away, so it should be um, calibrated. Still no GPS satellite, so you have to wait for that if you want to fly with GPS lock. Otherwise, it'll just fly with optical flow. And I've already flown it, and it's not super stable, and it's pretty windy right now, so I'm not going to chance it. But while we're waiting for GPS satellites, we'll go ahead and turn on the phone and connect it up. You do have to download an app 
to the phone, which I already I already downloaded that app already. So we're gonna go ahead and let me go ahead, let me turn on recording of the phone here so you can see the phone screen recording. So you do have to go into your Wi-Fi settings. And it'll be, it'll show up as like drone something something blah blah blah. There's no password. Just connect to it. And it's actually I already connected it to to this before, so it already remembered that. So I'm already connected. And then we'll go ahead and launch the app. It's called MRC Pro. And we'll hit start. And then it has some instructions here for a beginner if you want to watch that you can uh, read that and then you can see we have our connection here and it still says weak gps signal i am under some trees here but it's a pretty open area so i'm not sure why the signal is so bad let's try to move over a little bit here maybe they there's metal inside this concrete these concrete steps. So let's move over here. Yeah, it still says weak GPS signal. But I'm going to try and fly it a little bit here in line of sight. And let's record the video. So let's see what settings we're at. So it's 2.5K, 1440. Uh, I'll try 4K. It's going to be very low resolution. Or not low resolution, but low frame rate. And let's start recording. Okay, it's starting to record. Yeah, it still says weak GPS signal. So let me uh, see if it'll take off. So I think you can just unlock it and then throttle up and then it'll start, it'll just take off. So hopefully we won't have any problems. Okay, we have nine GPS satellites now. So should maintain a pretty good hover. Let's go ahead and unlock it. Here we go. I'll take it off. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty stable. It's a little bit of wind right now. But you can see it's not, not moving around at all right now. So you definitely want to wait for that GPS lock. I'm turning around here. It is shaking a little bit now. Quite windy. But uh, let's see, yeah, I can see myself there in the video. How's that looking? I think if it's not moving around too much, the low frame rate doesn't matter a whole lot. But let's just go ahead and fly it a little bit here. Let's go backwards. You can kind of see what the, how, how the lighting conditions affect the video. Looking at me in the shadows there. And I'm on low rates here. We had, it's pretty jittery. Let's go ahead and let's just give you a little bit of an aerial view. I'm not sure what the the distance is for range. I think it's a few hundred meters at most. Let's go back here. And I'm not going to do a return home because it's going to go right into these trees here. But let's just take a look around. This is what the video looks like in 4K. Yeah, the GPS lock seems to be working pretty decently. It's not nearly as good as the Mavic Mini. And you can see with, with the wind and no stabilization, the video is very bouncy. All right, let's go up a little higher. And of course the gimbal angle is fixed so uh, i'm going to stop this recording and let's see what 2.5k looks like start recording there this is 2.5k at 25 frames per second there you can see how how bouncy it is in the wind with no gimbal so you are um, you are getting what you pay for. Uh, that gim that I think the uh, extra cost of the Mavic Mini is going into that gimbal and uh, the uh, software stabilization, and all those extra features. All right, so let's just take a quick look around. 
How's that uh, video looking? I mean, it is windy, but it's not like super windy. It's maybe like 10 miles an hour, but wow, it really shows up in the video. It's really bouncy. All right, so let's bring it back down here. Maybe it'll, the video will look a little better, not so high up. All right, so I'm just gonna fly it around a little bit here, a little bit lower to the ground. Now you can see how much all, all your movements are showing up in the video. So I consider this like a practice zone, a practice drone, really. Do a little forward here. All right, let's bring it closer here. You can see me in the video here. And you can compare this to how it looked before in 4K. So, I mean, on the screen here, it doesn't look too bad. When you're a little bit closer, obviously the shaking is still there, but it's not as bad as when you're higher up. All right, and the lock is not, I mean, it's just drifting a little bit. It's just drifting a little bit around. It's not nearly as locked in as the Mavic Mini, but I mean, that's about what you can expect. Let's uh, smooth this back here. Yeah, and if I slow her down a little bit here and we're gonna go backwards and just do a sort of a flyaway. See what that looks like. You can kind of see how overexposed the ground is there in that part of the video. And when, you, when, you come, when you're going forwards, you can see how tilted down it is. So there is a function on here where you can do like, um, uh, what is it? Basically trace like a flight path. Like, um, and I'm not gonna try that because I saw some other guys' videos and the drone like flew away. So uh, that's kind of scary and I don't want this to fly away on me. So I'm not gonna try that. Uh, there's also a function for doing like a circle me or like a orbit. Um, but I couldn't find that on the interface here. So let me see if I can. Okay, here it is. It's in there under multifunction. Okay. So actually, I'm going to give that a try while I still have battery. This is going to be, this is going to be tricky. and then go out. I'm gonna need a lot of space for this because I don't know what it's gonna do. All right, here's so. I'm gonna hit orbit. Yeah, I think that's the yeah, default orbit point's 10 meters away from the drone. I rotate cl clockwise continuously. All right. So there it goes. <laughs> yeah, that's a fairly sm uh, small circle. It's about 10 meters, it looks like. So you're gonna need some space to do this, but. I can see myself here. There we go. Got to hold the phone separately. Yeah, but the circle seems to be fairly consistent. So you can do an orbit. That seems to be working pretty good. How do I stop it? All right, so I went back into multifunction and that stopped. And let's try the follow me. 
So it's always going to point to the phone, wherever the phone is. Looks like it uses the GPS from the phone. All right, so it's looking at me. I'm pretty well centered here. All right, so will it rotate? It's kind of rotating. Okay, it is rotating. It's very slow. All right. I'm going to go away. It's following me. It's definitely following me. It's kind of jerky. It kind of moves in little spurts. <laughs> All right, so what if I move towards it? Will it go backwards? Will it go away? It will go away, but it doesn't in like little spurts like that. It's not, yeah, it's like it just does a little, little, little jerky movement, so it's not super smooth. Okay. Right, so, hit that again. That stopped. I'll put that on hover. There's headless mode and app joystick. So, if you hit app joystick, it'll turn the phone into a joystick instead of using the transmitter. Uh, I'm not going to be testing that. All right. I think, it's, I think it gives you guys a pretty good idea of how everything works on here. Uh, these are things I'm willing to test. And yeah, I mean, you get what you pay for. It's pretty decent for the price. Uh, but if you want a much smoother video, uh, better frame rate, and we obviously with the gimbal and all that, the Mavic Mini is way, way nicer but you are going to be paying a premium for that. So, go ahead and land it here. I'm going to stop the video. And I'm going to land it, uh, let's see. I'm going to land it right, right here. I'm going to bring it down. And hit the land button. So I'm just all hands off. You see the land button here, and it just lands on its own. So pretty easy. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Anyway, that's the uh, Bug 7 from MGX. Link in the description if you guys want to check it out. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.